Hello, I'm Skill Incarnate bringing you all the latest indie gaming goodness. Today we're starting a new series of my favourite game, Project Zomboid, called Hardcore Survival. What this basically involves is me trying to survive in a new town with the zombie population set to high. Now, the town that I'm going to pick is Drayton. Drayton is a map that I haven't played before. Now, I've seen a couple of YouTube videos on it, and what I do know is that it's a very urban setting. Many buildings, many shops, warehouses, and lots and lots of zombies in one very, very packed location. Survival in this town is going to be very hard. To compound that, we're also turning the zombie count to high. Got my character build here. Now, what we are going to pick is something a little bit different today. We're going to go with the electrician build. I've only ever used the electrician one time before, and I haven't delved into the different things you can do as an electrician, so we, we may do that during the course of our playthrough. Now, I'm going to have to pick a couple of negative traits. I've already got one here, the slow reader trait. This is more of an inconvenience than something that could be life-threatening. It just means that reading books is going to take a little bit longer. Definitely manageable. For the other trait, I'm going to pick... Hemophobic. If I can find it, here we go. The hemophobic trait means that when you perform first aid actions on yourself, you go into a state of panic. And that I cannot perform self, uh, sorry, first aid on other players. As this is just a, a single player game, at the moment this, this playthrough will be single player. That won't really be much of a concern for me. Let's smash this out, roll the dice and see where we start. So I'm really excited to be, be doing another playthrough. I haven't done a, a proper playthrough of Project Zomboid in a very long time. I've only ever done it once before and it wasn't very popular. So I don't know how people will take this playthrough. But the main reason why I want to do this is because I have a, another series called the Project Zomboid Tutorials. And I want to pick a different setting to do some of the tutorials in, just to make things a bit more interesting. So I'm not always stuck in the same town with the same character, same traits. It's going to liven things up a bit. Now, I'm a little bit ill at the moment, so apologies if I'm, I'm, uh, my voice crackles a little bit. But we're going to forge onwards. If the game doesn't crash. Occasionally the game does do this. It will hang. There we go. So I've spawned in what looks to be a multi-story building on the ground floor. Already I'm just going to go around and get my hands on some basic items. Number one on the list is going to be a weapon of some sort. I don't want to be fighting barehanded. We'll take the tweezers in case I get any injuries requiring me to remove glass or nasty uh, items from my body. We're checking the bookcases. Now, I'm one thing I'm not going to do is give you a guide on day one survival. Because I, I have a tutorial video on day one survival, which I do suggest you go and check out if you haven't already. But what I do suggest you also do is, yeah, check out the rest of my tutorials on Project Zomboid. There's now six up, and they cover all of the basic aspects of survival, from combat, weapons crafting, finding a base, reinforcing a base, uh, getting f uh, food, water, books, and all that, that basic stuff that you'll need to start a game. What, what I'm going to try and do is 
use this setting to continue that playthrough. So we haven't found a bag yet, which is what what I really was hoping for. I haven't found any good books either. But that doesn't matter because this is a very big town and there will be a lot of buildings for me to loot. The only thing I really, really need is a bag. Because without a bag I'm not going to be able to carry very much at all. Now, the first building that you spawn in is always uninhabited. Whether it's a tiny house or a massive multi-story building like the one we're in, we have the option of being able to explore the place in peace. We've got a weapon there, but that frying pan's a bit busted up. We'll take that bowl. I'll, um, I'll be using that later on. The bowl's actually a pretty useful item. I haven't found anything yet, so I might actually take that, that frying pan. It's better than nothing. A frying pan's a good weapon because it's very uh, very durable. It will last a very long time before it breaks. Now, this is interesting. This looks like a military installation, but as we can see, it appears to have been overrun. We may actually get into there a little later and see what's there. We may be able to find guns and other supplies. So I might grab some food. Um, oh, there, that's no good. We'll, we, have, we have to find some food that we don't have to cook. Kind of beef jerky. Try not to concern myself with cooking on the first day until I've at least found a base to populate. We're going to head upstairs and we're going to have a look around hopefully get ourselves a bag and maybe a knife because I love the knife the knife is king in this game a good player with a knife can kill zombies faster than than with any other weapon and here we are our prayers are answered a kitchen knife now uh, knives are pretty hard to come by so I don't want to use that kitchen knife unless I absolutely have to but if we really get stuck, we've got a couple of weapons on us. With uh, with the zombie spawns at the level that they are, on high, we'll probably find that after a couple of days, it's going to be really, really hard to, to get around the streets. Because the, the Zeds are just going to basically take over the town. On the first day, what we really want to do is concern ourselves with finding somewhere safe to set up in. Before it gets so bad. Because, uh, yeah, once once the Zeds really start to, to spread out over the town, then when getting around is going to be yeah, a real challenge. So unfortunately, I'm still not finding... Did I? No, this is a new section. There's a lot of pretty useful stuff here. There's another kitchen knife. I thought that was <laughs> that said marijuana for a second there. Um, and uh, a, a, as an interesting aside, we can actually cultivate marijuana. And the reason why we can do that, and we, we probably will have a crack at that at some point, is it's a good uh, chance to talk about some of the mods that I'm using in this playthrough. I am using the Hydrocraft mod which is a fantastic mod for Project Zomboid. It adds so many different things like weapons, tools, farming, extra uh, extra vegetables and stuff you can grow on your farm. There are There's even um, livestock. You can get uh, pets like dogs. And there's a whole electricity, uh, electrical object system, explosives, and, and more. It's a... It's a it's, the best mod for Project Zomboid at the moment, by far. The other mod that I'm using is the Ortman's Guns mod. The Ortman's Guns mod adds over a hundred different guns, ranged weapons to Project Zomboid. 
and these guns include pistols, submachine guns, shotguns, assault rifles, bolt action rifles, battle rifles, even your low tech weapons like your crowbars, uh, sorry, your your crossbows and your bows. This this has it all. So unfortunately, we have not found a bag anywhere, despite my best efforts. So we're going to have to move on. Let's move on. Oh, here we go. This this looks interesting. It's a hammer. Nothing there. Those boxes usually contain some useful tools if you're lucky. There's some more here. Paint. There was a hammer. Ah, here we go. So this is an Alice pack. What this basically is, uh, for those who haven't played a lot of games like uh, DayZ and Armour, it's a military grade backpack and it has a very high storage capacity. And it also has very high weight reduction. So you can stow a lot of stuff in your backpack. We'll take that hammer as well. Alright, so we've got a bag. That's good. We've got everything we need. So let's get out of here. Now, I'm not using any other mods apart from the wooden dowels mod. And the reason why I'm using the Wooden Dowels mod is for the purpose of doing my Project Zomboid tutorials. Sometimes I have run out of nails, and for the purpose of the, the tutorials where I'm building things, I had to build things out of Wooden Dowels. So I actually forgot to turn that off, so we, we are going to have the option to build with Wooden Dowels in this playthrough. What that basically means is that in, in place of nails, I'm able to use a, uh, I suppose you'll call it a wooden nail or a dowel for those who haven't done carpentry. It's a, uh, it's just basically, think of it like a wooden nail or, that you can use to fasten wood together. Now you need a pretty high carpentry skill to use it, so it's not, it, it's a little, uh, people think it's a little cheap because the challenge of the game is obviously in the rarity of, of certain tools and objects like nails. But I, I have had to use it to do the tutorials. So we, can, we, we, will, we will have access to wooden dowels, but looking at the size of this town, I don't think my problem is going to be the rarity of tools. I think it's going to be more around the, the sheer amount of, of Zeds that, are, that are, I'm going to have to contend with. So this looks like a supermarket it's like I've been followed we may come back there at a later point because the, there are some Zeds milling around keep moving what I'm doing is I'm looking for a home now this looks good because it's uh, it's a walled area and it's potentially oh and it's open too that's fantastic so I'm going, to, I'm going to have to get rid of these guys. The problem is that I'm very severely outnumbered here. So I'm going to try and buy myself a bit of time by getting these guys to follow me into the woods. It sounds... I can hear more Zeds in the woods, so this may actually make my problem worse. But when you're outnumbered, it's a very good tip to to lead zombies in into either around buildings to break line of sight because they will forget where you are. And again, it, it depends on the on what you set the game. You can you can set the zombies to be actually pretty intelligent, where they'll actually hunt you down like a bloodhound. But because the settings for the zombies are on default, I can pretty easily trick them. Which is what I've done. So I'm just going to get rid of this pack. And then I want to go into that tool store and I want to see what's in there because it looks like there could be some very useful weapons for us. It looks like uh, we're outnumbered here. 
So I'm going to get my knife, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my spare knife, the good knife, in the bag so I don't accidentally use it. I'm going to use my other knife to take a couple of these guys out and give myself a bit of breathing room. So as you can see, knives are a very, very useful weapon. They are high risk. To use them properly, you, you have to literally get point blank with the Z. And then you'll drive the knife into his head, like so. If you're a good player, you'll get the hang of this pretty soon. And it has the advantage of being a one-hit kill. As you can see, there's no other weapon that offers that, that ability. But if you, you, you can only really use it when on one zombie at a time. So you have to, as you'll notice, I'm pushing the other Zeds away. And concentrating on one of them and shanking them one at a time. So ooh, we've got a shotgun there. Now as I said, we are using the Ortman's Guns mod. So I will be able to make liberal use of uh, firearms. There's some food for us. A spare bag. I'll leave the school bag there because school bags really aren't that uh, aren't that useful as a as a bag. They have very low capacity. Now the other thing that to note is that this building is not alarmed, so that's really good. Although my unfortunately my knife is broken, so I've got a I've got a couple of little butter knives, but. Um, Just going to try and take these guys out one at a time. There we go. So this is either going to be one or two types of store. It's either going to be a gun store or a hardware store. Let's uh, take this guy out and then we'll have a look. And this is yeah, this is obviously a hardware store. So we we're actually. Um, we're laughing. This is a bonanza of uh, supplies for us. We will have all the all the tools and weapons that we need. So what I'm going to do is explore this store, and I'm going to try and see if I can get my hands on a couple of other knives. As as you know, my knife I, I did snap uh, while infiltrating this place. So I really want to get my hands on a hunting knife. Well, now here we go, we've got another bag, so we'll, we'll equip a secondary bag. Now, what that means is in my offhand, I'm carrying another bag. That means I can't use any two-handed weapons while I've got that bag equipped. That's not a big deal. What I really, really need is another knife. I can use a screwdriver as a shank. But a screwdriver obviously has better applications than being used as a makeshift blade. So we'll leave that there for the moment. Oh, there's another screwdriver, but it's nearly broken. There's some axes. This is we, we, we are incredibly lucky to have found this store. We have a multitude of different tools and supplies here. And it's going to make reinforcing this base very easy. Now, one thing I will do is I'll check upstairs. Oh, here we go. If there's a living area up here and there's a fridge, then, oh, there's the, looks like that's the owner of the home. Now, this looks like a potential home for us. Once, once we get rid of the previous owners. That guy didn't even see me stomping on his friend's head. So we'll, we'll get rid of these guys. Beautiful. That's a shotgun. Oh man, Spas 12. So that's a, a semi-auto shotty. We'll leave that there for now because I've got an Ithaca pump action shotgun in my uh, in my backpack. But uh, what I want to do just for now is to secure the place. And then I'm going to drop a sheet rope out the side so I can climb up and down if I get stuck on, on street level. Now, we need to find the kitchen. If there's a kitchen, there should be. 
Ah, here we go. And we've got a fully, well, not fully stocked fridge, but a, uh, a fridge with a couple of supplies. So that's great. So this place ticks all my requirements for a, two, a, a new house or a new, a new home base. We've got a multi-story uh, building. We've got uh, only a couple of entrances. In, in our case, it's just the, the couple of doors at the front. All of this is reinforced. These, these bars are very strong. The zombies can eventually break through this, but it's, it's going to take quite a lot of zombies to do that. The weakest part of the building is obviously these doors. And what we can do is replace those doors later on. So I'm going to just have a little bit of a peek around. And I'm going to see what other stores are nearby. We'll see what's in these crates as well. Can sometimes get hunting knives. If I'm going to hunting knife, I'm going to be in good shape. I am going to have to get rid of this horde here. Because uh, they're, they're literally right around the corner from my new home. Thankfully, they're not too smart. We'll just uh, lead them out here. We just want a couple of them to head our way. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the, the history of, uh, of me playing Project Zomboid and, um, yeah, just in general, my experiences with this game. The first YouTube video I ever made was a tour, or a, or a base tour of my base in a town called Phoenix. This is getting pretty, pretty dicey now. This is not good. You have to lead these guys off. Anyway, I, I made a base in a town called Phoenix. And the Phoenix was a, a very big town. A lot a lot bigger than the one we're in now. And I also set the zombie spawn levels up to high. And no one really watched that, that, uh, that base tour. But I managed to get uh, a couple of people who saw it. And, you know, got, got some nice feedback. And what came out of that was that there was a lot of things that I picked up that people didn't have tutorials for. So there wasn't a lot of guides on how to play this game really well. And the only way that people learnt to play the game really well is the same way I learnt. You made mistakes and you died a lot. Now, because we're in a game where there are zombies and there is permadeath, a mistake in this game doesn't mean reloading a checkpoint. It means you literally have to start the entire game from scratch. So, there's a little bit of frustration element in that. And certainly with the, the difficulty jacked up as it is, there is the likelihood I may need to... I may die. I may have to start again. Now, for those who don't know, when a zombie bites or scratches you in this game, there is no cure. If you get bitten, your chance of contracting the zombie virus is virtually 100%. I don't think it is 100%, but it's like 90, 99%. Or it, it's virtually... Oh, wow. This is a, that's a wall for PPK. Um, you, you're virtually knackered. You, you, your chance of survival is slim to none. So, to get good at this game, I played the game, I, I played a little bit, I made it past my first day, and then I died. I didn't know how to fight larger groups of zombies, got bitten, then I died. I tried to take over a base, I went to sleep in the wrong place when I got tired, and I died. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of frustration element in the game like that, because... Because it is a roguelike game, and because, you know, you, the penalty for failure in this game is pretty final. You, you die. I wanted to do some tutorials, and that's kind of what, what came out of my original series. And I started getting some really nice feedback from, you know, from the community, um, even from, from some of the Project Zomboid developers. Recently, I'm, I, I did actually get a little bit of... Uh, a message from them 
So yeah, it was it was a real a real shot in the arm. People were really enjoying the content. And apart from No Miss, who is another really good uh, Project Zomboid player and uh, a YouTuber, I uh, I think it's a bit of a niche market. There's not a lot of not a lot of channels that do tutorials on this game. So I guess in that sense, I am uh, one of a kind. And uh, it is uh, it is really cool to to be doing something that not a lot of other people are doing, but. The, the main problem was that I was doing tutorials all the time in the same town with no variation and I started getting tired of uh, doing the same thing all the time. So I decided to come back and do another series of uh, a let's play or a, a, in my case a survival guide. And that'll hopefully make things a little bit more interesting for me at least and hopefully for you as well. Take out these guys. Alright. So now I've taken out most of the, the Zeds around the front of my new home. We're going to head around this corner because I think there might be some more stores up to the north. But um, I want to be really careful when I, when I head up that way because I don't want to... I don't want to overreach. It's now nearly six o'clock at night and for those who haven't played a lot of the game there is a, a element of fatigue you can get tired and if you overexert yourself over tire yourself you won't be able to perform certain actions now what we found here is a fantastic place this is a bookstore so what we're going to do is we're going to take the glass out and jump in here And yeah, we're, this is really good. So I'll be able to get all of my books in that location. But I am going to get away because it looks like we've got uh, quite a lot of Zeds. That is a hell of a lot. So let's zoom out a bit and see if we can um, lead them away. I don't want to lead them towards my base. I'm going to lead them away from my base. Try and break contact with them up in this clump of trees. There's more Zeds here. There's more bloody hell. They're everywhere. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to do something a little bit risky. I'm going to try and cut into this stand of trees. And hopefully lose most of them in these trees. There we go. I have no idea if that worked or not, but it did. Awesome. So I am going to have to get rid of these guys. They are they are a little bit too close for comfort. So what I'm doing at the moment is the old uh, stomp and push. Bloody hell! This there are a hell of a lot of Zeds here, and I'm a little bit worried with. Uh, Oh, damn, we've got the whole pack of them after me now. So I've really only got a butter knife, so... That might have to... Oh, the knife snapped. I really hope he didn't bite me then. No, he didn't. It was a little close, though. Okay. This, so this is not good. This is, uh... This is pretty bad. I'm going to try and lose them in this alleyway here. I don't want to lose the whole pack, but just try and whittle them down a little bit. Uh, lose a couple of them so I can fight them one at a time, or maybe just a couple at a time. This this might work. There we go. I've got a machete. Okay, so I'm going to break out the machete. I've got another butter knife. A lot of people laugh at the butter knife as a weapon, but it still kills zombies in one shot. 
know, it's, it just it breaks really fast. Is the only, that's the only downside of it. It still works. Oh, why can't I use the machete? Machete works in the same way, it's just a lot tougher than the, the butter knife, obviously. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to start exterminating these guys. I'm really happy I picked up that machete, it may have been a lifesaver. Whoops. It's too many. Oh, damn. The, the further south they force me, the, the more zombies I'm picking up, because there's zom zombies down here as well. And this machete's going to break as well, eventually, so... Try and head back up this way. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm, I'm obviously separating these guys out. So I can find him one at a time. And I'm trying to not make uh, enrage too many Zeds, because this, uh, this is not going well for me at all. I did not want to... I did not want to have to fight this many Zeds. Oh, that was so close. Alright. This is not going very well for me. At this rate, they're going to completely block off my entrance to my main base. I may need to go and find another place to sleep for the night. Oh, there's a rolling pin. At least the Zeds are, are being considerate and they're dropping plenty of weapons for me to use on their brethren. There's an M4. Now a lot of people are wondering why I'm not using guns. The answer to that is simple. Uh, guns of any type will produce noise, and zombies are attracted to noise very, very heavily. A uh, pack of zombies will investigate any gunshot, and you only ever want to use guns as a last resort, uh, or if you've got a silencer. Unfortunately, I do not have a silencer. But I may have one in the hardware store, so we might actually go and um, go and have a look and see if we can find one. We've got a uh, walkie-talkie, lockets. Okay, so unfortunately for me, I had to bust my machete to just to just to get rid of that giant pack, and I'm I'm sure I didn't kill those guys. I don't know where they've gone. I think they may have wandered up the side anyway. I need to find them before I go to sleep. Because uh, I'm not going to feel comfortable going to sleep in there if I if there's a gigantic pack of zombies just wandering around. Wanting to uh, take a chunk out of me. Oh, they all gone into the house. The broken windows should have been the telltale sign. That's alright. We'll take them out one at a time. Here they come. They've gone the, they've gone the back way around. That's okay. You can take them out. So, what's happened is the Zeds would have chased after me. I ran up that side alleyway and they probably kept walking. And they would have gone all the way around, around the building or they would have gone into the building. That, that's the sound of them in the building. You can hear that banging. They're, um, they're trying to break the doors of the building to get through. Um, which suits me fine. 
As long as they're distracted, I can just keep uh, taking them out like so. Oops, oh, that was close. I'm going to let this guy come out here a little bit. So it's pretty late, and I don't really have a lot of supplies on me in terms of food and water. But what we do have is that supermarket close by, so what I might do is I'll wander into that supermarket and see if I can find some food to take with me. My character is a bit hungry. Oh, there's the giant pack of them. So they've got to go. There's, there's too many of them there. This could be a long night. I may, I may actually not get to sleep tonight. I may have to spend the entire night fighting these guys off. Because I can't leave, I can't leave a pack like this out the front of the place. They'll, they'll break in. There's, there's more Zeds, Zeds up there. Oh, man. This is, the, this is the problem when you go exploring. I wanted to see what the nearby stores were, and it was really good that I found that bookstore, but the consequence of that was I brought a whole pack of zombies back to my home. But the, the main thing that I know is that there's three really important places. I can get food and water. I can get tools because I'm living in a tool store and I can get books. So they're pretty much the three main things you need in this game. And I reckon if I can weather this storm, take this uh, this pack out, I will have very little trouble surviving. But the, the good thing about having the tool store is there's a couple of axes in there on one of the shelves. So I'm going to take one of those axes and start cutting down the trees. Make myself some makeshift weapons, clubs, uh, some wooden stakes, some shanks. Get ready to, uh, to start exterminating the horde. So as you can see, well, uh, there's, so there's one horde in this building and there's another horde up here. So... I need to do something about this. Oh, I don't like this. Oh. Alright. So it was a, that machete was a real lucky find. So there's a bit of a bug in this game sometimes where the game goes slow motion, as you can see. I'm kind of in this slow motion animation where I'm slowed down. I have no idea what that is and I don't know if it, it, it seems to have only happened with the there you go back to normal with the new version of the game occasionally when there's a lot of action on screen the the frame rate will drop and it will appear to go into slow motion. Okay. I'm not game to go in there because it's just too dark. I'm just gonna. All I'm doing is I just want to wander around, see what sort of. Yeah, there's a pack. There's a whole pack there. So. We might leave those guys for the moment. I'm gonna wander down here, take these last few guys out. It is getting a bit late. So. I might take those few guys out. I want to get to the supermarket because the supermarket will will have a lot of fresh food that I can um, I can consume. Which uh, I have a little bit of food in my new base. I checked the fridge out, but it's only got a couple of items in the fridge, so only enough food for maybe a day or two. There might be some dry goods in there as well. And um, sometimes tool stores have MREs, so military grade rations, but um, it's a big maybe. And I, I want to I wanna get my hands on some fresh food in the supermarket. But um, I've got an army of Zeds that's uh, saying otherwise at the moment. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm pushing, pushing the Zeds away and trying to concentrate on knifing one at a time. 
I'm also trying to preserve the durability of my machete by trying to stomp them out. There we go. Alright, that... I might be lucky that way. I'm gonna head... I'm gonna just sneak down here. Because my machete's nearly cactus. Um, there's some Zeds in there, but... If I'm lucky, I might be able to sneak past these guys and get into the supermarket. I only want to grab just some fresh food and stuff my backpack with maybe a couple of days of food. But it's very dark in here. And there's a big pack of Zeds over there, so... I wonder what's in here. Very, very dark, so... Yeah. What I'll do is I'll, um, I'll leave the... I'll leave my looting run till daylight. I might just grab some items from the shelves. And just, just enough for a, maybe a day or two of food. I'm not, uh, not too fussed. Now, I note about fighting Zeds, you, you never want to fight more than maybe two or three of them at a time. If you have to fight lots of them, you always make sure you've got a knife or something you can use for that insta-kill attack. I'm zooming in because it's very dark, and that will give me a little bit of an edge I can kind of see. Let's have a look out the back here. There's a, uh, there's a little bit of light in here. Now, this looks like a storage area. I might be able to find some fresh food. Hey, okay. What do we got here? Empty. Well, there's a little bit of food here, bananas. That'll do. Well, it's a bit disappointing. Unfortunately, there's no food here. But that's okay. There might be some more food in the supermarket. Even if there's not food in the supermarket, it doesn't matter. Grab this. Yeah, even though the animation says there's stuff on the shelves, they're empty. It's a little bit of a bug in this game, sometimes... Whoop. Where'd you wander in from? Okay. Yeah, so... There's a couple of little, uh... Morsels of food. But this is looking pretty bare bones. Yeah, there's not a lot here, unfortunately. But that's okay, we'll just grab what we can. There's enough for a day or two of food, so I'm not too worried. Take this guy out. Uh-oh. Gotta get out of here. I'm surrounded yet again, so... I'm gonna go through the woods again. Now, this is more dangerous because I can't actually see very well what I'm doing, and hopefully I don't walk into a pack of Zeds. Now it's now after midnight and it's not a good idea to be engaging these guys. So I'm just going to try and kill the stragglers at the closest to the entrance. And hope that my machete holds up. Maybe if I'm lucky, oh, M1 Garand. So I've got to get, I've got to get rid of this large pack here, they're literally standing within earshot of the base and a uh, pack that big could potentially break through and get in and kill me while I'm asleep so I don't want to take any chances with that now fortunately they've noticed me so we gotta we're gonna have to combat them try and use the woods again this is a really good and this is why living near the woods is a really good idea because no matter how bad the odds are you can always tip them back in your favor if you can you can break that visual link with the with the zeds if they can't see you they'll forget about you there we go So, despite how dire things are looking at the moment, 
And uh, I won't lie, they're, they're not looking good. If I can somehow find a way to survive this, to survive this many Zeds on my back, supply-wise, I've got everything I need in one one location. Take these guys out. This might have the do for now because I don't want to be. I don't. I don't like fighting too late in the day. The later, the more tired that you get, the more that your your vision will narrow. And here you can you can see that I'm I'm actually I'm only drowsy. But um, I think that's going to do it for now. I don't want to tempt fate any further. I've got I've got enough food. I can eat a, an apple or something. Let's get inside. Sneak upstairs. But in spite of everything, in spite of everything that's transpired today, I still have a very secure base with a, a really good overview here. It's a two-story building. I'm just closing all the curtains to give me a little bit of privacy while I sleep. And I've got a, yeah, pretty much a, a whole uh, store full of tools. We're going to utilize them in our next episode to make some, to make some makeshift weapons. So this machete is not going to last much longer. Thankfully, I'll be able to carve myself some makeshift weapons, clubs, some wooden shanks or wooden stakes. And uh, we'll use that to turn the turn the tide in our favour. So if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Please leave your comments. And hopefully we will see you for the next episode. Until next time, Skill Incarnate out.